Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to part six of my Logic Pro 10 201 course. In the next few videos, I'll be talking about synthesis and sampling. And in this video in particular, I wanna talk about oscillators and filters and how they apply to sound synthesis. So I'm gonna use the ES2 synthesizer for demonstration. However, this applies to pretty much all synthesizers that work with wave-based or analog style synthesis. Analog style or waveform based synthesis is different than what's called sample based synthesis in that analog style synthesis generates sound from a voltage or a, a digital waveform in this case in our DAW. Sample based synthesis is different because it generates sound from an audio sample, from an audio recording. So this is something like the EXS24. That's how you can get a great piano sound in the EXS24 because those sounds are actually generated from a real life recording of a piano. Here we're dealing with the digital uh, recreations of analog voltages, uh, analog waveforms. So that's how we generate sound in analog style synthesis or analog emulating synthesis. So I absolutely love the ES2. Um, I know it's an older synthesizer, but it really is perfect to teach synthesis fundamentals. And that's what I'm gonna do over the next two videos. So the first thing we need to do is we need to reset the synthesizer back to a stock setting so that I can show you what everything does. Right now, I'm on the factory default setting and it sounds like this. So I'm gonna have to reset a few things. So if you follow me here and you recall your default setting, what you're gonna do is turn off all three of your oscillators here. Make sure that your triangle here, uh, if you option click on it, sets it to the, the center. Make sure all three of these are set to zero and then make sure that this option here is set to zero as well. Make sure that the analog and glide knobs are all the way down. Make sure that the CBD option is off. We're gonna turn off the whole filter wheel here by clicking the filter button. If unison is on, make sure that's turned off and set your voice mode to polyphonic. Set this uh, oscillator start option to soft for now. Make sure that all th six of these uh, knobs, if you option click on them, it sets them back to default. Um, you're gonna wanna make sure to turn off all of your modulation routers. Right now, only these three are turned on. So if you option click on the top of them, this will set them to off. So no modulation routing is happening. And then for the vector mode here, you wanna turn this off as well. Now, because I turned off all the modulation routing, most of this stuff down here is disabled, except for envelope number three here. So even if you don't know what an ADSR envelope is yet, I'm gonna show you how to reset this. So make sure that your A slider is all the way down. This is the attack time. Make sure that your S slider is all the way up. This is your sustain. Make sure that the time is set right to the center by clicking here. And make sure your release is pulled all the way down. And then option click on your velocity slider to set that back to default. If you set it like that, the decay, the D slider will not matter at all. So don't worry about that one. So now what we should have is a default stock setting with basically nothing on it. In fact, if I pl uh, play my keyboard, you'll hear nothing. You you'll see the MIDI input flashing up here, but you don't hear anything because we haven't loaded in or turned on an oscillator. So the oscillator is really the most fundamental element of synthesis and synthesizers. An oscillator is the element in a synthesizer that generates sound. And that's what these three things are here. So I'm gonna turn on oscillator number one, and I'm gonna set this to sine wave here. A sine wave is the most basic, dullest possible oscillator sound we can have. It sounds like this. Really basic, right? There's four main oscillator waveforms that are used in analog style synthesis. So we have the sine wave, which is essentially a single frequency with no overtones. That's why it's so dull and boring sounding. And then we have the triangle wave, which has a few overtones in it, but it's still pretty dry, pretty boring sounding. It's got a bit more bite to it, but not much. We have the square wave, which has every other harmonic in the harmonic series. 
It's a lot more biting uh, than the triangle wave is. And then lastly, we have the sawtooth wave, which has every harmonic in the harmonic series. Those are the basic main four oscillator waveforms that are used in almost every single synthesizer out there that uses analog style or waveform based synthesis. Now there's a lot of other options and a lot of other, a lot of other more complex waveforms available, but those are the, the main four to remember, sine, triangle, square, and sawtooth. Now most oscillators you can tune as well. So each one of these oscillators, you can adjust this knob over here to adjust it in semitones or half steps. Or you can adjust it in fine tuning in sense. So that's this uh, zero C option here if you pull it up. You can adjust this uh, plus or minus 50 cents. If you don't already know already, there are 50 or 100 cents total in a semitone. And a semitone is the same thing as a musical half step. And there's 12 semitones in an octave. So you can tune each of these oscillators in this way. Now, the cool thing is you can layer these up as well. So let's say I want a sawtooth up here, a sawtooth here, but then I want a square wave here. You can do that as well, and you can detune them too. So maybe I want, I want my second oscillator to be a, a, an octave down or 12 semitones down, and then maybe I want oscillator three up seven semitones, which is the same thing as a perfect fifth. Now, if you want to adjust the volume of the entire synthesizer, you can pull that up or down here. So let's pull that down just a little bit. So you can use the tuning to create harmony between the different oscillators or layer them up in unison or layer them up in octaves. Now, another thing you can do is you can adjust the mix or the blend between the three oscillators by using the triangle right here. So up here you just hear oscillator one, here you hear oscillator two, and here you hear oscillator three. If you option click on this, you hear all three of them equally. Another way to detune oscillators is in fine tuning with scents. So right now oscillators one and two are both uh, set to a sawtooth. If I pull this one up by say six or seven cents and pull this one down by seven cents, what you're doing is up tuning one and detuning, low tuning another. And what that does is it creates a bit of a chorus effect. This is similar to you know adding a chorus or ensemble effect to your voice and detuning uh, the voices to spread out the frequencies just a bit to create a thicker sound. So you can do that in a synthesizer as well. Now, right now I'm working in polyphonic mode. These are the three voice modes, polyphonic, monophonic, and legato. In polyphonic mode, you can play multiple notes at the same time. So you can play chords. If you're in monophonic or legato mode, you can only play one note at a time. But notice there's that little bit of front end edge when I'm in monophonic mode and I play two notes back to back. Listen to this in legato mode. So that little front end attack is no longer there in legato mode because it smooths out the envelope between notes. It's essentially, essentially every note is on its own envelope. Uh, we'll talk more about envelopes and ADSRs in the next video. Now, in addition to choosing uh, one of the three voice modes, you can also choose this unison option. Now, what the unison option does is in polyphonic mode, you'll notice that it, it lowers the number of voices by half. So in polyphonic mode, if you set your number of voices all the way up to 32, this is the number of voices that you can play simultaneously. So if you only set this to like a low number, like four, you can only play four notes at a time. So I'm gonna pl intentionally play five notes and listen to what happens.
the bottom note disappears because I played one, two, three, four, and then five. And as soon as that fifth note played, the first note that I played disappears. So that's how polyphonic mode works with voices. With legato and monophonic mode, this is the number of voices that are layered up on top of each other. Now this doesn't have much of an effect if you have unison mode turned off. If I set this to eight, or set it to 20, it's not gonna have any effect on the sound at all. They're both gonna sound the same. However, if I turn on this unison mode, it's like layering 20 voices, 20 oscillators on the same note. It's like 20 copies of all of this on the same note. So right now it's probably just gonna sound really loud. Yeah, too loud, I don't wanna play that. I'd have to pull the volume way down in order to play that. but it's not really doing any, anything to it tonally. It's just making it really loud. So why even use this? Well, way over here, there's this option, uh, this knob called analog. And what this does is it simulates analog pitch drift and analog synthesizers. So I find this particularly useful if you use monophonic or legato mode, you pull up your voice count a bit, turn on unison, and then pull up the analog knob and imagine all 20 something of these voices being slightly spread apart, being slightly detuned from each other in addition to the detuning that I did here. And you get this really nice rich chorus effect. Now, this is also dependent upon your oscillator start options over here. There's three of these. To demonstrate this, I'm gonna turn off oscillators two and three, and I'm gonna go back to a sine wave just for a moment. I'm gonna pull the analog all the way back down, put this back on polyphonic. In analog synthesizers, the oscillators are just analog voltages. That's why they're called voltage controlled oscillators or VCOs. In analog synthesizers, the VCOs are just constantly running in the background. So there's no telling when you press the key whether you are entering or opening up that, uh, tr triggering that waveform to play at the top of a compression, the bottom of a rarefaction, or maybe just randomly on a zero crossing. If you know anything about waveforms, you know that if you edit waveforms off of zero crossings, or if you don't edit zero crossings without fading, you can get little pops and clicks in the signal. So imagine triggering a note and having the waveform just be up at the top of the waveform as opposed to be on a zero crossing. That's what free does. Free simulates an analog oscillator where you don't have any control over when the waveform voltage starts. So you get those little pops and clicks on the waveform, on the front end of the waveform. If you set this to hard, this intentionally sets it at the, the loudest point or the highest point in the waveform so the, the pop or the click is, is consistent, but it's also as loud as it's possibly going to be. If you set this to soft, what this does is it sets the start point of the oscillator to a zero crossing so you don't get that uh, pop or click. And really the, the pop and click you're hearing there, although it's kind of soft, is actually where I'm releasing the key. There's a little bit of noise at the front end of the note, but not much. So going back to what we had before, let's turn on oscillators two and three. Let's put this back on a sawtooth wave and back on legato. So if I pull my analog option back up again and I play around with my oscillator start, we're gonna get some different tones if we use soft or hard mode as opposed to free mode. So here's soft mode. So pretty drastic chorus effect. Here's hard. They're almost the same. And then on free, we're gonna get a bit less of a chorus effect. And it's actually a bit more balanced sounding. And the reason why is on soft and hard, the waveforms, because they're all starting from the same point and the voices are slightly detuned, the voices are all more or less in phase with each other. So you get this sort of uh, in phase chorus effect. 
with free, all the waveforms are starting at different points. All the different uh, voices that are in unison are starting at different points, so you get a more balanced uh, chorus effect. Now there's an option over here that says CBD. CBD stands for Constant Beat Detuning. Now what this does is it corrects notes that are slightly out of tune in the high range. When you detune oscillators and you use the unison option and you use the analog option, sometimes higher frequencies, higher notes can start to sound kind of in uh, out of tune. Let me demonstrate this by switching this back to polyphonic mode and I'll set my MIDI controller up a couple octaves. Hear that dissonance on the high note? If you kick in your constant beat detuning, I'll go all the way to 100%, it downplays and corrects some of that detuning. But it keeps that nice full rich chorus effect. Now, typically I don't use the CBD option unless I have a patch where there's a, uh, I'm playing a lot in the high end. If it's more of a bass heavy instrument, I'll usually just leave this off. But the higher the register of the instrument, the higher I'll set the setting. So here's off again. A really heavy chorus with some pretty noticeable dissonance. And at 100%, the chorus is still there. It's not quite as heavy, but it's, it's correcting some of the dissonance in the high range. So for this example, I'll just set this to 50%. Now, if I go back to legato for a moment here, let's play around with this glide option. Now, glide is the amount of portament or portamento between two notes, the amount of glide between two notes. Um, as you pull this up, that glide gets more and more drastic, and the glide typically sounds best in mono and legato mode. So I'll, I'll still use legato for this. So at zero, let's see what this sounds like. Sounds like it did before. If I pull this up, Notice that the notes kind of slur between each other. They kind of glide. And if you pull this up to a really drastic uh, level. You can create some really drastic glide effects. Now, typically, I only use this a little bit. And I really only use it for like synth leads where I want the leads to sound nice and legato style. In addition to the glide option, there's an option for the bend range. This is the pitch bend range. By default, it's set to uh, up and down uh, two semitones. But you can customize this. You can roll this up to up to 36 semitones up and down, so that's three octaves. Now, typically that's a bit too much, but let's set this to like 12 up and down. So that's an octave up and an octave down. And you can even set these to two different values. So maybe I want this to be an octave up, but maybe like two semitones down. So you can create some musical intervals for your bend range as well. So that's most of the oscillators and the voice options up here. Uh, there's a few more oscillator settings that I want to talk about, uh, but we'll talk about those in the next video when we start talking about modulation. Next up, let's talk about filters. So the ES2 has this filter wheel, which you can turn on here. And these are actually two filters. This is filter one, this is filter two. So let's start with just filter one here. And what you can do is you can blend between these two filters. So this is if this is all the way over to the left, you're just gonna hear number one. If it's over to the right, you're just gonna hear number two. There's actually two different modes to work with this filter wheel as well. If you click here where it says series, this will put it in parallel mode. Now this will be this is actually a true blend. So this will mean that you just hear one, you just hear two, but if you pull this in the middle, it basically splits the filter in two and you hear 50% filter one and 50% filter two. When this is in series, 
this actually means that filter one will run through filter two. So any changes that you make to filter two will affect filter one as long as the blend is set somewhere in the middle. But if I set this all the way to the left, you're just gonna hear filter one. So filter one, there's five options, a low pass filter, a high pass filter, a peak filter, a band reject filter, and a band pass filter. So let's start with the low pass filter. Low pass means that it allows low frequencies but cuts highs. So the cutoff frequency is controlled here. So as I roll this down, you'll hear that it cuts out more and more of the highs. Likewise, if I use a high pass filter, I'm gonna start over on the left. This cuts the lows. So high pass means high allow, which cuts the lows. The peak filter sounds like this. Think of this as a frequency boost at the cutoff frequency. It doesn't cut the highs or lows, but it boosts the mid frequencies somewhere, wherever you set the cutoff frequency, much like boosting a band in an EQ. The band reject filter cuts frequencies at the cutoff frequency, but still leaves the extreme highs and the extreme lows. So think of this as like a, like pulling a band down in an EQ, like way down, down to nothing. And a band pass filter is like a high pass and a low pass at the same time. It cuts the highs and it cuts the lows and leaves the frequencies in the middle. The resonance knob essentially controls the amount of resonance just before the cutoff frequency. So typically in filters, resonance is an amount of feedback um, that's added at the cutoff frequency. So this can be used to actually feed back the cutoff frequency. Now with the peak filter, it really helps to accentuate that band that's being boosted. And it can really create a nice sweeping sound. There's not much of an effect at the band reject. And there's a pretty minor effect with the band pass as well. There's also a drive knob here that essentially just adds overdrive uh, at the filter. So it just overdrives the filter and saturates the filter. So that's filter one. Filter two is a dedicated low pass filter. So instead of different filter types to pick from here, there's different slopes. So you have 12 dB, 18 dB, and 24 dB slopes. So basically that means there's 12, 18, or 24 decibels of reduction per octave. So a 24 dB uh, filter is gonna have a much steeper slope than say a 12 dB filter. So you hear a lot more of the highs being cut out more drastically at the 24 dB level than they are at the 12 dB level. There's also a resonance knob, just like filter one. And there's an FM option that we'll talk about in the next video when we start talking about frequency modulation. The fat button essentially adds, uh, provides a bit of a low frequency uh, boost to the signal. And it's not really specifically a low frequency boost, it's more of like a saturation um, that boosts the signal a bit, but it just happens to be in the low end because this is a low pass filter. Now a couple more things uh, before we wrap up this video. The, I've already said that the main volume control is right here. You can actually layer an additional sine wave onto whatever uh, oscillators you've chosen here. So you can 
uh, reinforce the base with an extra sine wave. So this is really a fourth oscillator that's a dedicated sine wave. And you'll notice that this is a post-filter sine wave. So it helps reinforce the sound a bit. There's a distortion unit up here. You can uh, adjust the amount of distortion here, uh, set it to a soft or hard setting, and then you can choose a dark or bright tone. And there's also a chorus, flanger, and phaser effect. You can adjust the intensity of this effect here and the speed of the effect here. Now, believe it or not, the little XY pad here has absolutely nothing to do with the effects unit here. It's a little misleading because the way this is added in here, it makes it look like these six knobs really have something to do with this XY pad. It actually doesn't. Um, you can control these with the XY pad, but you can control a bunch of things with the XY pad. So in the next video, what we're going to talk about is synthesis modulation in the ES2. So we'll go through all of the modulation routers. We'll talk about the LFOs, the two LFOs, the three envelopes. We'll talk about the XY pad using the vector envelope. And we'll also talk about some of the different um, oscillator options like the frequency modulation option here, the sync modulation option, and the ring modulation option that we didn't talk about in this video. If you like the video, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. You can also check me out on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and on Patreon as well. As always, thanks for the support and thanks for watching.